Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial. Although it is for Affinity Photo, it can easily be used with Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher because they use brushes in the same way. But I want to have a look at a tutorial by James Patterson. Now I did make a video about a month ago, this one here, looking at James Patterson's tutorials online, sort of written and what have you, and I will add the link to this in the description for this video. Now, James Patterson is a writer for Digital Camera World, and he also used to write for uh, practical photography, and he's also an editor of Practical Photoshop magazine. So he does write for lots of different magazines. In the last video I looked at a couple of the videos that he'd or written tutorials online that he'd done. But he's just sort of put up recently a new one. This one here. Um, which is 37 free paint splash brushes to create a portrait in Affinity. And this is uh, this effect here. Um, and I will again I will add a link to this page and or the following page that I'm going to click on now and you click on to this one and you get the page here and you do get a video that shows you how to do this effect so I'm not going to sort of look into that what I want to look into is the files that you download and the brushes that you can get because um, if I come further, if I just scoot down here a bit, as you can see, there's also a written sort of part of the tutorial. So you can either watch the video or sort of follow the written part. But up here, you've got the where the project files can be downloaded. So you click on the here, and you will get the sort of follow the links and what have you to download the file. Now. It will download as a zip file called pp188.zip, I think it's called. Now, I think this is was a download from the original magazine, probably Practical Photography, issue 188. So, I'm going to look into this folder here. And we have four different folders here. And the Affinity one look at that you get the star image which you can use and you also get these brushes now these ones that start with and there's a JPEG here as well the ones that start with dot underline dash and then the name they don't load into affinity at least not my Mac ver uh, PC version maybe they work with Macs or some other file format I don't know but the one that is just called like splash before or splash brushes dot abr these can be used in affinity photo you know on, on my windows now we do have like these other folders and i'll come back to those in a minute but first you know you want to install these brushes into affinity photo so i've opened up an a4 document and I've added a pixel layer. So what I need to do is come to the brushes tab in the top right studio. And then to the far right of that studio at the top here is this sort of little icon. You click on that and you click on import brushes. You then need to navigate to the folder with the brushes in and like I said ignore the dot underline splash one that starts and just click on the splash brushes and then click open and then that will be installed you have to wait a little while while it is installed and it will come up with a little message saying like 37 brushes have been installed and then when you come to this drop down menu you have those 37 
splash brushes and I'm just going to have a quick look at some of them so I'll click on the brush tool here and we will select this one and I'm, just, I'm not going to do all of them I'll just do a random selection of some of these and like that so let me just add another pixel layer turn that one off and what we've we got here we've got a sort of paint uh, daub another one like that so you can see there's all sorts of different types of splashes and what have you so that is how you can install those brushes to use in that tutorial or to use in whatever project you want so that is the sort of affinity side so if I come back to this folder here, like I said, there are four other folders. Now these were obviously part of tutorials that were in PP188 issue um, for Affinity, Photoshop and what have you. But as we get all of these folders, it doesn't mean that you can't have a look at them and even try them out. So if we look in the Photoshop one, we have this tree picture which you can use but there's also the mist brushes now obviously I don't have access to the Photoshop tutorial but it doesn't mean that you can't use these brushes so again if you come to the brushes menu and up to the top here import brushes and go through the same process of navigating to that folder and then you can install the mist brushes so let me just add another layer here turn that one off and we will just have a look at these sort of different mist effects or fog or whatever or clouds or whatever and this one here mist state I'm sorry it looks like there's nothing happening but if you click and start pressing you can see it does various sized um, blobs of fog or mist or what have you. Let me add another layer, turn that off and we'll try this last one here and then this very last one there. So that is the mist brushes that you can add from that Photoshop folder. And we come back here and we'll look at this step by step and this one could be quite handy so they've, they've given us a beach image to work with so I'm going to open that in Affinity Photo come back to here now again these ones that start with dot dash something these first four files and this JPEG file which also has that dot dash I couldn't get these to work in Affinity Photo so ignore them um, but they are sort of exactly the same because you see you've got here B plus W FX A3 you've got B plus W FX A3 and they got H which is horizontal V which is vertical they've got the same for A4 and A3 horizontal and vertical now seeing as this is a portrait image I'm going to go for the vertical version and as Affinity Photo can use PSD files in most cases anyway if I double click on this what it opens up is this file with a border going around it and let me just come back off that and I can see here the border layer is here and if I open this up you have two layers within this group one is the key line is that black line there and one is the border itself which would just leave the key line so what we need is an image so we will use this beach image that they supplied so I'm just going to right click that and copy it come back to this uh, document here and as you can see here see here paste image above here so if I highlight that come up to the edit menu and paste 
that image will now be behind the border. So all I need to do is let me zoom out and I'll resize. I'll put a center in the center. I'll resize this down so it fits behind the border like so. So now we can have a look at the different options. Now the first one here is black and white. So if I open this group, we have a whole list of black and white filters that you could add. So we've got an infrared green filter. Now these one these colored ones, green, blue, orange, yellow, what have you, they all seem to have the same effect which just seems to make everything red so that may be something that has not translated well over in the PSD file but all the ones that don't sort of have a color so like this neutral one that one's quite good I think this deep red one worked when I tried it yes that one worked okay so the deep red light red neutral and the infrared work okay in Affinity Photo and so if I come up to the next one we have some contrast settings so you've got heavy medium light so if we go for heavy for example and you can try all sort of all sorts of different things to see what works and then we have toning so you have a split tone effect and you can just find ones that you like gold tone that's quite nice and the sepia tone so that is the toning effects and then you have the vignettes so you've got a heavy vignette and down to a light vignette and because they are sort of turn on and offable in their own little groups you can have more than one if you want so for example you could have like the heavy vignette in that group but you might want to have split tone in four and split tone in two on to get a different effect all together there and maybe a sort of bit of contrast um, so how you use those different layers is up to you but it's all set up ready for you to go and they all work in Affinity Photo except for really those black and white ones which are the green blue orange yellow filters so that is sort of that folder covered so you do have the same sort of thing be it horizontal or vertical in A3 or A4 in the step by step folder and this last folder is a tool school it's called uh, again I have no idea what the original tutorial was about I'm guessing it was just looking at the various tools that were available in Photoshop but there is a nice image here that you could use for something in one of your projects so I mean it's I'm assuming it's free to use photograph as it was um, originally free to use from the magazine download so uh, just because there is a folder just you know called affinity and it links with that affinity tutorial doesn't mean that you can't use any or all of the other options in these other folders because they although they were probably done for a Photoshop originally they can be used and adapted in affinity photo so basically that is my look at James Patterson's work and if I just go back to this one here I would highly recommend looking through his videos here there's lots of Photoshop ones that would obviously give you ideas but this is the one that I used in the last video the you know with a free start image um, but there are quite a few other Affinity Photo um, tutorials in this collection and there are like seven pages of these here 
so well worth looking at because he's a very good maker of tutorials so thank you for watching my tutorial and hopefully it's been of some help so goodbye